Good morning and welcome to Rising. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning once again. And we have a really interesting show. Why don't you tell them about it, Brianna? Well, we've got some new developments and changes to Twitter's content moderation policy. The Twitter account at Elon Jet was suspended yesterday. College student Jack Sweeney founded the account in 2020 and kept tabs on Elon Musk's private jet. Sweeney shared the public air travel, da travel data on Twitter for years. Twitter reinstated the account Wednesday night, but it restricted Sweeney from posting the locations of Musk and other public figures' planes in real time. As for Sweeney's personal account, that was permabanned after Musk threatened legal action. This despite the fact that earlier last month's uh, self-dubbed chief twit and defender of free speech Elon Musk took to Twitter writing, quote, my commitment to free speech extends to even the account following my plane, even though that is a direct personal safety risk. Musk justified his change of heart by claiming a car carrying their child was followed last night. That was an interesting tweet that involved little Nas X. Yeah, there was a tweet about a car. But he just, Elon Nas just X called it little X. With this, with little, little X. Is Maybe right. that's someone else. Maybe that's Maybe. one of his own kids' names. That is actually possible. <laughs> Right? He, one of his kids is... Uh... Uh, the, the difficult to say. He was even asked in an interview once to pronounce it, and he seemed to not be entirely I think that's there. what he meant and by that's the right. So his kids were in a car that were being followed, which is a genuinely scary circumstance yeah. to be in and that I have a lot of empathy for. However, it, it, from my perspective, it seems to have little to nothing to do with flight records. So one funny quirk of this is that uh, when Musk tweeted out that real-time posting of someone else's location violates doxing policy, uh, it was kind of fact-checked by the kind of Twitter notes function. Mm -hmm. And it pointed out that publishing flight records is protected under the First Amendment. This is longstanding. You know, this, this person tweet posts a lot of people's flight records. Um, he's a fan of Elon Musk. He, he Elon Musk once tried to get him to pull down the the account by offering him $500. And the guy was like, well, I really just want to meet you and like ride on your plane. <laughs> <laughs> I think he like said, let me ride on your plane or give me $50,000 and this could all be over. And Musk chose not to do it. So here we are. Hmm. So then he ended up buying all of Twitter <laughs> in order to deal with it. Um, yeah. So, so a couple things. Yeah. One, Community Notes is great. This is the program that was formerly Birdwatch. I've talked about it a lot. I, it's fantastic. People get fact checked all the time. It's it's all over the place because it allows users do it. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't reflect the bias of content moderators because anyone can do it. It's more like uh, it, it's it's community Wikipedia. derived. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, fact checking like Wikipedia. Um, so that is great. And he and Elon has been all for it. He's been totally supportive of it. It's so much better than what Facebook does with fact checking. Um, the other thing is like okay, I, I don't think. Um, an account that gives like a rough approximation of where your plane is is really threatening your physical safety. And then even so, even if you're giving more specific information, like Elon is standing at the corner of 17th and K, um, I'm just, just docs where our, where our <laughs> location is, and for that was the location Robbie. that popped into my head. Um, like. I, th I don't know that that's necessarily threatening anyone. I mean, I, I, I might say that, right? I might be walking through a, a square in D.C. and say, oh, I just saw Senator whoever. I just I like I've seen Senator Amy Klobuchar on the street. We yeah, used to live there, in the same building. I've seen AOC. Tweet. I've seen Matt Gates. I've seen. There was a semi viral tweet yesterday where someone saw a picture of Rudy Giuliani and uh, in, a, in a fit, in an outfit they didn't love, and posted it on, on Twitter. And everyone could see in that moment that Rudy Giuliani, yeah. Giuliani was standing on this corner in Midtown. And what, what constitutes doxing has been of some dispute. A lot of folks can, uh, that are kind of in the Elon Musk camp have said, Said that the the claims that folks are being doxxed, the claims that a lot of progress, left left leaning folks are being doxxed, are exaggerated. That there is um, too much ratcheting up of language around violence and threat uh, when it comes to let's say trans activists or some of these uh, drag shows and things mm -hmm. like that, where there have been a lot of protests recently. But on the flip side, it seems that there's a lot of concern about threat when it comes to Elon Musk. So I saw somebody tweeting something along the lines of, we care about doxing and protecting people from physical violence when you're a billionaire owner of Twitter, but not when you're an average citizen. Um, I mean, I, I do think sharing there, your address or your private phone number, or those, I think those things are certainly doxing. I, if, if, if there was an account that was like tweeting out like what his address is or something, I would probably think that should be disabled. I, I, I think that that probably is true too. Now, to, we should also point out that Twitter is also blocking links to the Elon Musk jet Instagram account. So he has 
the same setup on I think Instagram and Facebook, other social media platforms. So if you try, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're not this guy, but you try to post links to it and other services, that's also being blocked um, because uh, it is, quote, potentially harmful under the policy. Do you see this as inconsistent with some of the remarks that Elon Musk has made before, including that he quite explicitly would not block this account? Well, this also shows that as a reminder, you know, social media companies don't have to operate under the exact same free speech norms as the First Amendment prescribes for the public square. Mm -hmm. And that, that is occasionally beneficial because in the public square, if you were just on public property or something and you share and you, you know, wrote down on sidewalk chalk or something what Elon Musk's address is, I don't think you can be arrested for that. Right, Robbie, the phone Robbie, you, the so, so it's better that Twitter can, it's, it's not necessarily wrong that Twitter can make as a private entity, can make speech-related decisions the, not... The, the question, though, Robbie, is whether or not Elon Musk is being inconsistent with both his own stated goals for Twitter about being a free speech space that is much more closely aligned with what the offline free speech standards are as set by the courts. I, I, yes, I think he, like all of the people that preceded him and probably all of the people that will, will follow him in terms of content moderation are certainly being inconsistent. But that's, I don't think that's necessarily fair because Elon Musk made claims about why he was buying Twitter and what Twitter would become that are not the claims that everybody else has made. Twitter, he bought Twitter precisely because he had criticisms of how it was run under previous ownership. So other people weren't sitting around saying Twitter's gonna be a free speech zone, we're bringing comedy back to Twitter, I'm not gonna block people even if they harass me, I'm gonna open it up. That was Elon Musk's claim. And it does seem to be really interesting. A lot of people are skeptical about the rationale that's being brought up here to say my kids were threatened so in a car, by the way, mm -hmm. which I think is legitimate. But because of that, I'm going to shut down this account that has nothing to do I don't, with No, I don't, I don't agree with that. With I, that I think the previous owners did of, of these other uh, um, prior to Musk. I remember Dorsey saying that Twitter was, should be viewed as the free speech wing of the free speech party. Zuckerberg has said Facebook is a free speech site. No, no, how, can you, how can you say that there isn't a market difference, a market turn and trajectory for Elon Musk, when that is his stated, his whole stated purpose of buying Twitter is to do something differently than the people have done before. Right. He, he obviously is in a category of his own. Uh, Jack didn't say, I'm never going to, he didn't make a whole personality out of, I'm never going to ban the guy that's tracking my plane. Elon Musk explicitly said, I'm never going to ban the guy who's tracking my plane. And within a month of owning the site, has banned the guy that's tracking his plane. And again, using this excuse of his children, I think a lot of people are seeing this as another instance of him doing what he did with the Alex Jones banning, which also seemed to be inconsistent, where he's saying, because I have experienced something personally, which legitimately is a tragedy and hard, the loss of his own his own child, it's, it's horrible. But I, I'm able to put, have empathy for myself and make policy based on what makes me comfortable. But when it comes to the same things that other people are experiencing, other folks, whether they be trans or, or you know, black or whatever it is on the site who've experienced different kind of targeted harassment, it's, it's a completely different policy. And people are objecting to the idea that it's, again, elite power concentrated to benefit an elite person, the, you know, what used to be the richest person in the world, instead of trying to promulgate policies that actually expand free speech and protect people who are genuinely vulnerable. Yeah, I, I think it is inconsistent, but it's a taste of their own medicine for people who had So it's a revenge politics selection. now? That's basically what it is. Okay, so I, I, I think that the people, a lot of people who are watching are sincerely invested in the kind of free speech principles that Elon Musk articulated when he bought this app. And I am one of those people. I really hope for the best. I think that a lot of these disclosures that we've gotten in the Twitter files are meaningful and I hope something comes out of them. I'm really interested to hear more about who specifically was shadow banned. I'm interested to hear more about how these decisions got made. I think some of the disclosures about how the decision around banning Trump was, were made, that where there was an admission that he didn't actually violate company policy, that's huge, that's big news. And I think that's a good thing for him to be doing. But when he does stuff like this, where he's clearly just putting himself before the principles that got him so, much, so many fans and so much support in the first place, I think that he's really hurting his own personal brand. But if the previous regimes had lived up to their own promises and commitments on this exact same thing, on free speech, he never would have had the interest to buy it in the first place. He never no, would well, have seen something to correct. Right, but they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have those same values. 
You know, I, I, I disagree with them. I, I have, have been criticizing Twitter long before Elon Musk was a, a thought in my brain. But the, the fact is that we're talking about Elon Musk here, and we can't deflect to everybody else's responsibility. Those other people aren't at Twitter anymore. So what is Elon Musk going to do? Is Elon Musk going to have to live down the fact that he flagrantly over and over again now is undermining his own commitments um, to the people who love him and we're looking forward to him making some positive changes on the app. So we'll see how the public continues to respond to this. I think a lot of folks are seeing this as a hypocritical move. Um, we'll see if it gets reversed. There's a lot of holding him accountable being done in the mainstream media for the inconsistencies in the policies he outlines. I agree with that. I, we were missing some of that previously, I think. Sure, sure. All right, I'm looking forward to your radar coming up next, Brianna.